Our first eyewitness story is from Adamara State, and it shows a massive number of people fleeing Mubi to Yola after a series of attacks by terrorists. The next picture from Umahia Abia State showing the horrible state of the Umahia Ikotepene Road, which presents motorists a harrowing experience. Similarly, from Benin is this picture of the very popular Boundary Road Junction, GRA, Benin, in a state of disrepair. Our eyewitness reporter is calling on the government to save motorists from distress. Thank you for sending in those pictures. Please do keep them coming. The march towards the 2015 general elections appears to be gaining momentum, with more aspirants picking up nomination forms from their respective political parties. The latest being the governor of Yobe State, Ibrahim Gaydam, who was also endorsed today by notable politicians and groups in the state to contest for a second term in next year's governorship poll. The party also received thousands of PDP defectors into its fold. Our correspondent Kelvin Obete reports. The August 27th stadium in Damaturu, the Yobe State capital, filled with supporters of the All Progressives Congress. Lots of them have been here from the early hours of the day to affirm their support for the governor. The political office holders, national and state legislators, women and youth groups, as well as associations, are represented here. Their messages are summed up in one voice. They are satisfied with the achievements of the governor and want him to continue in office. You are routine. We started benefiting the dividends of democracy. No doubt of it. And I can challenge anybody who deserve anything, you deserve endorsements of Europeans to be our governor for 100 years. Now, on behalf of my colleagues, members of the State Executive Council inform the audience that we at the State Executive Council revolt and thereby declare our total unpolluting support to His Excellency the Executive Governor Dr. al Haji Ibrahim Gaidam to stand in the 2015 governorship elections for Yoga State in view of the numerous achievements he has done to the people of Yoga State. That's done. The governor is presented with a document containing the signatures of members of the party across the state and a nomination form purchased by concerned citizens. This, of course, signals his acceptance of the offer. We have always believed that our modest contributions will speak for us. I also want to believe that one of the reasons why you have been those me is because you have no thoughts to justify your action. I am delighted to report that we have been able to redeem over 90% of the promises we made to the electorates in 2011 electionary campaigns. Governor Gaydan promises to build on his accomplishments if re-elected. We will continue to provide professional facilities in based in quality education, ensure safer communities, provide affordable health care, ensure food security, cartel unemployment, provide affordable housing and intensify poverty alleviation measures. We will ensure continuity in the implementation of our laudable policies and programs for the betterment of our people. One of the biggest moments of the events is the reception of some PDP members who defected to the APC. The party says it is confident of victory at the 2015 general elections. Huh? Kelvin Obete, huh? Channels Television News. Also in politics, the immediate past Minister of State for Education, Mr. Yesem Wike, has advised the People's Democratic Party to present the best candidate for the River State governorship election if the party wants to reclaim the seat from the All Progressives Congress. He dismissed any plans to zone the party's ticket to a particular area and challenged the PDP to conduct the primaries for the best to emerge. PDP has not zoned anything. For, for anyone to have said, I have violated the zoning principle. 
So you, you, you have had the people said, we are not going to solve this. We want any competent person, first of all, that their own intention, their own aim is to see how they take back the brick house from APC, which was run by PDP, but the government had not PDP to APC. So PDP has now become an opposition party in the state. And so for the opposition party, what brothers or what matters to opposition party? How do we get back the seat? That is what is important. It is only in the ruling party that you cannot talk about where the government has not finished. What do we do next? But for opposition party, their own business is how do we get back that seat? And so they will do all out whatever strategy they will adopt to assume that they get back that seat. And the party has said, look, if the situation will find ourselves, the circumstances will find ourselves, we must have to open it up so that we can have those who may have the capacity to challenge the ruling party, which is APC. I should be able to let my party know why they should allow me to run and give me a ticket because I think I have the capacity to challenge the ruling party there, which is APC. Former Minister of State for Education, Mr. Inyesom Wike. While some aspirants for political positions in 2015 have no problem picking up the nomination forms at whatever price they are sold, some Nigerian youth are demanding what you may call affirmative action. They say if governance continues to be only for the highest bidder, Nigerian youth may never have a part to play. According to them, Nigeria is not catching up with the pace of global development because the youth are not involved in governance. At a gathering in Abuja, some of the youth demanded for a 30% political inclusion in governance as a way to remedy the situation. About 70% of Nigeria's population is made up of young men and women, 35 years and below. Statistics also reveals that a high percentage of these youths are unemployed. In this news forum held in Abuja, Nigeria's capital city, a cross-section of Nigerian youths believe their plight has remained unchanged because they are not involved in governance. We ask all political parties to create space for the comfortable young people institution while they still have the opportunity to be part of the great futuristic ideas. So combine that with the ideas of our fathers, it will be a perfect nation. So I subscribe to the fact that if we don't have enough youths in governance in Nigeria, we will not move as fast as we should. Aside from encouraging youths to participate in politics, the group is also advocating for subsidized nomination funds from political parties. They believe this will enable more youths to run for elective positions. If you're picking up a phone for two million, sincerely, how many youths can afford that? Most of the youths we have in Nigeria are looking for jobs, they can't afford that. So if you want them to contest more, make it as cheap as possible. I don't even know why that thing is expensive anyway. Because we are supposed to get the best brains to rule us, not the wealthiest, not the richest. In some parties, women are not meant to pay for funds. And so youths can also agitate that they are youths, they don't have money and all that. They can agitate that funds for youth should be free, or they should, sub, or they should subsidize the funds for youths. Nigeria has recently witnessed more youths in appointive positions, but whether a high number of youths will participate in those elective and appointive positions in the 2015 political dispensation is a question that time will answer. It appears that the dust raised by the security aids by the removal of the security aids of the House of Representatives Speaker, Honorable Aminu Tambawa, may not settle soon as more reactions have continued to trail the decision. The Nigerian Bar Association, the NBA, has condemned the action by the Inspector General of Police, which he claimed was taken on the ground of an alleged violation of Section 68, Subsection 1G of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999 as amended by the speaker in a statement signed by the nba president augustine alege the body explained that the nigeria police force is not a court of law 
and lacks competence to determine whether or not a provision of the Constitution has been violated, as that is a function reserved exclusively for the courts of law. Part of the statement reads, I quote, The Right Honorable Aminu Tambuwal still remains the Speaker of the House of Representatives, and he is entitled to the full paraphernalia of his office, including all his police escort and security detail. The NBA called on the Inspector General of Police to restore the police escort and security detail of the Speaker immediately as the action portends a grave danger to Nigeria's democracy. Meanwhile, reactions continue to trail the defection of the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Honorable Aminu Tambowal, and the withdrawal of a security detail by the Inspector General of Police. A former president of the Nigerian Bar Association, Mr. Olisa Agbakoba, has joined in condemning the action of the police. But beyond this, Mr. Agbakoba, Agbakoba thinks that the defection is good if it will make the politicians focus on the citizens and how to secure their votes. If people had read the constitution, both the IG, PDP, APC, then they know the matter is quite simple. The first is that the function of the police is to enforce the law, not to interpret and apply. So when a city is declared vacant, it's covered by the provisions of Section 65. Tambowal has actually defected out of the PDP into the APC. What that means is that the provisions of the Constitution take effect immediately. I'm not saying, the Constitution is saying, okay. the Constitution by Section 1, Subsection 3, says it's supreme. So the Constitution says, if you defect out of a party upon which you are elected, and I think it makes common sense. So what I think the speaker ought to be doing, you know, is to leave. For more on Mr. Agbakuba's views on this issue and other issues, please tune in to Law Weekly tomorrow, Sunday at 9.30 p.m. Now, for 26 years, Nigeria has been involved in the world in the fight against poliomyelitis, a disease caused by the polio virus, which usually affects children and cold, leave them paralyzed. This effort has paid off with an appreciable reduction in the number of cases from several hundred thousand globally in 1988 to just 416 in 2014, six of which are in Nigeria. Our correspondent, Mary Alala Yusuf, reports. They did not have to have a shriveled limb or this difficulty with movement. Some reduced to begging on the streets, unable to play with other youths in the standard game of football. They've been attacked by the polio virus and left paralyzed in one or more limbs. The source of the virus? Infested fecal matter, which is transferred from the hand to the mouth, either directly or in food and water. The, the, the virus itself damages some nerve fibers, which are outlets, which are roots or products of the spinal cord. They have many symptoms and major symptoms. Fever, nausea, vomiting, nausea pain, diarrhea. And that's results after a while then before the onset of the major you have a resurgence of the fever then nerve pain gets worse and sudden onset of the person's ability to use the limb it's not just the limb it will have even affectation of the respiratory muscles in 1988 a global effort to eradicate poliomyelitis the disease caused by the polio virus started with the administration of the oral polio vaccine opv and cases reduced by 99 percent from 350,000 in over 125 countries to 416 reported cases in 2013. Basic prevention is one, um, good hygiene. Good hygiene, environmental sanitation, good source of water, good housing, good sanitation, it's important. Waste disposal should be treated. And on top of it, it should be immunized because it's a man-to-man -man disease. Outside the normal vaccine immunization, there also be time to time in uh, natural immunization days. It's outside, there's no disease. You're like, okay, let us go extra mile, let's give extra shots of these vaccines to 
reduce the incidence and see to also be able to cover um, for in order to prevent an outbreak of the disease. The polio virus is currently active in only three countries, Pakistan, Afghanistan and Nigeria. In Nigeria, progress has been made from 53 cases in 2013 to just six wild polio infections, which linger, perhaps, due to children who were missed on previous immunization days. In the case of polio, there was a time we were almost getting a clean slate on polio issue. And I was just waiting for us, can we see what will happen in the next two years, if we not have reported cases. But what did we have? Some part of the country started feeling funny to start to look, oh, could there be a bioterrorism coming to cause deliberate sterility to, of our people? Polio infections are not uncommon. Most people fight them off successfully with no symptoms, but tragically, one out of 200 people gets paralyzed. Is there any hope for a person who is already affected? At the time that thing is going on, the body is also developing its own soldiers to fight this particular disease at that time. Immunity is being built. Soldiers, the white blood cells, all of them, they are in action, coming up to fight this something. So we now treat symptomatically, supportive treatment. Is it the vitamins, good food, water, making sure that the patient do well, we watch out for complications. What happens is that, like I said, the process will be completed, but we will not want further complications. So those complications that can be assaulted, unquote, along the line, might just be so curtailed. Apart from supportive treatment of an affected individual, exercise for the affected parts of the body and occupational therapy help to keep the limbs from wasting away and the people in productive employment. In March 2014, India with a population of over 1.2 billion, that's several times the size of Nigeria, was declared polio-free and experts say Nigeria is in need of a good dose of education, awareness and willpower to get rid of this disease which is transmitted from person to person. Mary Alale Yusuf, Channels Television News. Still ahead, on the news at 10. They may be thousands of miles away from home, but for some Africans living in the U.S., this makes no difference. Find out why. Please stay with us.